happy Earth Day, guys. And I wanted to show you a couple of things that I think is really interesting and all to do with our mother nature. Now, pollution is one of those things that we are trying really hard to solve as a problem. So this is what I used to do most mornings in North Carolina. I would try and pick up as much trash as I could along my usual morning walk. Take a look at some of the things I found. Favorite item of the day was this flip-flop which I think is pretty old because it's growing barnacles. Barnacles, guys, barnacles. Craziness. Hey guys, this is all the trash that I found from about there-ish all the way down to over here. So it's about a mile. We've got all sorts of things in here. A lot of bottles and shoes. So hey guys, this is one of the sea turtle nests right here. And as you can see, it's right on the dune. But the amount of trash that I picked up from a mile in front of it, if you can imagine a sea turtle baby trying to get through that. Bye. So to create our Earth Day bunting, you're gonna need a few things. White paper, pencil, washable markers, scissors, a drink carton, newspaper, string, or twine. And once you've made it, make sure you send me a picture to the adventurous art room at gmail.com. Now, creating our earth is gonna need a couple of things. We're gonna be doing something called printing. Printing always creates the reverse of an image. So to do that, we actually have to reverse our drawing first. So we are gonna flip the earth like this to make it easier for ourselves. Now, that picture is obviously a little bit wrong. It's being flipped like a pancake, but it will make it easier for us to be able to draw an accurate earth. So let's get started. So we're gonna make this part of our bunting first. And to do this, we're gonna create our very own earth print. Now, like I said, there's lots of different things you can use, but today I'm gonna to be using a um, drink container. So if you have something, so a milk container, this should work. The inside of the box is what we're gonna use. So I'm gonna use that. You could actually use aluminum foil. Um, that would work the same. It's up to you, whatever you have to hand, grab, and we're gonna create that print. So the first thing I did was I cut my box very so that I could use part of this box. I'm actually gonna use this box to create a planter for planting seeds. So um, I'm gonna try and save part of it too. Now when you're cutting into the box, be very careful, have an adult help you if you can't do it yourself because it's quite tough. A long box edge like so. Remember, use scissor safety, and like I said, I recommend having a grown-up help you with this so that you can be extra safe. So I'm going to cut this top off, and like I said, I'm actually going to reuse and recycle, because remember it's Earth Day, I'm going to do this too. I'm going to actually use this to plant my sunflower seeds in. Take this off. Oops, I might need to trim that. There we go. So like I said, keep this guy, put some soil in, it'll make a great container for some plants. Now what I am going to use the cutout section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the inside of the carton, this side right here. So I'm going to actually cut a square just to make life a little bit easier. And then you want to get something that you can make a round shape out of, or a circle shape on recommend using a cup or a glass or a roll of tape or if you want to draw it by freehand that's great do that too so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw I'm going to move my my earthly bunting out of the way so you guys can see it right there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a round shape on the my carton so I'm going to get a nice sharp pencil and I'm just trying to see what I have that's a circle shape near me I actually have this circle shape here, so I might use this. And I'm just going to trace around it. I'm going to use something a little bit darker. So here we go. All the way around. Remember our template is great to trace around, just like this. There we go, there's my circle shape. 
Now what I can do is I can cut this guy out using a scissors of safety. Remember, we want to just trim around the edge. Nice and carefully. Can free this circle a little bit too if that makes it easier. Cardboard is pretty tricky, but I know you can do it. So make sure you persevere. Don't ask your grown-ups to help you. Because it'll make your fingers nice and strong. We have our earth shape. We'll be trying to copy the earth shape that is up here, the one that we reversed earlier on. So because we reversed it, now that when we print on here and we turn this over, it will print just like the earth really is. So if we copy this one right here, it will look right, even though that, that guy is reversed. So you want to get yourself a sharp pencil or pen. I'm going to use this pen right here, and I'm going to press pretty hard because I want to be able to feel the divot or the groove that I've created on this piece of cardboard that I got from my recycled card. So I'm going to try and copy the shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? So remember that. Now my atlas or my world globe up here, and I'm going to try and copy those islands. So I'm going to try and copy coming down here. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's okay. And it's going to look really strange because this is the opposite or the reflection of the actual real world. There's my South America. Oh, that's okay. It's not perfect. And then we have an island up here, which is Greenland. Right here, which is where Europe is on this map. And there's England. Spain down there, all the way down there. And we've got Africa. And again, right now this is flipped over, but it should look pretty good once it's done. And then we have a bit of green down here. Awesome. All right. Actually, I kind of think that needs to be a little bit more careful like this. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two green markers. Remember, they have to be washable markers for this to work. I'm going to be using green to try and create a two-tone effect. So I'm going to in green, because islands and continents are green. And I'm just kind of coloring them in like this. all over. I'm going to leave some spaces for that other green that I have right there. There we go. It really does seem really odd to went color in a, a globe or a world that's not quite right. It's uh, strange to see Africa on this side, but that's okay. Alright, I'm going to use that light green. Add a little bit of a different two-tone effect. Nice. Okay. All the way down. And write this printing block with my fingertips. In a minute, once we start adding the blue ocean, it's going to be a little bit trickier, but that's okay too. Now you want to grab that blue washable marker, and we're going to color in the ocean. If you want to try making your ocean too tone you can go for it it's really up to you I'm just going to use blue today and I'm all the way around my islands creating that ocean again watch how I hold so I'm going to try and hold on the white as I color in almost around my finger which is kind of funny because it's all, it's like a stamp as soon as we start touching this ink it's going to come off on our fingers trust me I had blue and green fingers all day yesterday and as much as I like looking like a smurf we want to try and keep our mess to a minimum. So I'm just coloring in my ocean. Make sure you get all those like little nooks and crannies, I call them. All the way. Alright, we're almost done. Almost to that part where it's going to get a little bit tricky. Now, we want to take our finger off so we can color under our finger. But we want to hold on to our template, or our printing block, sorry, right here. So that it can still be colored in, but when you get it all over our fingertips. Because as soon as you put your finger on there, it's going to put all the ink on your finger. So be careful. There we go. Now, so I have my colored in world. You 
need to take yourself your piece of paper that I mentioned. I'm going to move everything a little bit to the side right now. Let's put this right here. But now we want to fit about six globes on this piece of paper. So we want to make sure that we have enough of enough space on here. So when we put our printing block onto our paper, don't put it in the middle because that means we've got all of this space that we can't use. Try and work nice and evenly in rows to kind of make this much more organized. So the first thing you're gonna do is wet the paper. Now you can use a brush. I'm gonna use a sponge. So I'm gonna wring out my sponge with my water. I'm gonna bring my water over here so you guys can see it. Nice clean water, nice clean sponge. And like I said, you can use a And we're just gonna wet our paper. Now this might take a little bit of practice, and I practiced a lot yesterday to get this right. I'm going to take our printing block and literally just press it onto the area where you wet the paper. Press it down nice and firmly. Kind of count to five. One, two, three, four and five and off and you should be left with this really great oh, that looks so cool that came out perfect actually this really great globe or world that looks awesome all right so now the key is with this we're going to do like i said we want to do six of them some will work better than a light one i'm not going to lie some though don't come out as well and i'm going to show you some of my not so great ones so here you can see and then I did the same process right here, but I added way too much water. Up here, I did the same thing again and added too little. So sometimes these will come out amazing. Some of these, you're going to have to take a little bit of practice. And you can see that they gradually got better as I got more and more used to adding that water. So the next one might not be quite the same, but that's okay. So now I'm coloring my earth for a second print. And I've been very careful to go around the ocean. And now I'm just working around my continents. And remember, we're working as if the earth has been flipped over. So that when we print it, it actually looks kind of like the real earth. And I'm using my dark green, and I'm going to be using my light green as well. The same as last time. To add a little bit of variety. There we go. And like I said, my second one might look slightly different from my first, but that's absolutely fine. There's that nice light green mixing in. Great. Okay, we're ready to do our sun. Get the same thing again. Sponge, wet that paper. Remember, this one may come out differently. That is okay. I'm going to put it right here next to this one. Get that paper nice and evenly covered. I'm going to print right here. And press down. Now, while I count to five, have a think about what other materials you could use to print onto. So I'm using white paper. Maybe you could try newspaper or you could try some brown paper to print on and see how they come out. Let's have a look at my... Oh, that one looks really good. It didn't quite print as well as the first, but that's absolutely fine. So if I look at the differences, you can see this one has a lot more white space or speckles of white there. Or, whereas this one's kind of more evenly covered. That's absolutely fine. So what I want you to do is make six of these and I will see you in a second. All right, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab yourself a newspaper. We want it to have lots of writing on it. So make sure you find areas of the newspaper that just has the writing. Grab hold of your template or your printing block. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna be tracing around that printing block so that you can create circles for your letters. If you want to write the word Earth Day, you're going to need eight letters. So once you trace around your eight circles, we're going to be able to cut those out. Make sure you're just using areas with the writing because you do want to be able to draw on top and create those really cool letters. Alrighty, so now that I've cut out my pieces for my writing, what I want you to do is kind of lay them out. And I'm going to have the word earth and day on my bunting. 
So I'm going to have colors. I'm going to choose to use just these colors because I want them to represent the, the earths we made earlier on. So I'm going to use the greens and the blues we used to create those. And what I want you to do is try your best to create some really chunky bubble writing. So I'm going to start with a blue first and I'm going to write the word and earth on these. So I'm going to write my day. And remember, we want to try and make our writing really stand out. So you can do bubble writing. Write the word day. Make that really thick line. I'm going to do my green. A really big A. And you can write these however you want. You can add some different colors, whatever you feel like doing to make them really stand out. And then I'm going to use them to make my Y. using the side of my mark because it's a little bit thicker. Alright, so I have my word day. And I'm going to put these out of the way. And I want to write earth. Big E. Well, A. Now it's really important we get this spelling right. R. And look, it spells ear, and then we're going to th for the th sound, earth. So nice big T, and then our H. That's right. Now we have our letters. It says Earth Day. What we can do is we can outline those in different colors. So I'm going to use my dark green and I'm going to go round my blue D and really make that lettering chunky and add it. What I want you to do is do the same for all of your letters and see what you can make. So now I've outlined all my letters in a different color. It makes them stand out a little bit. Now you have to make some big decisions because either you're going to add the string and you're going to make it read like this or you're going to be adding earths in between each letter. So once you make that choice, then you can start thinking about the string. So here are my, um, my printed earths that I made earlier. And what you want to do is take your scissors and very carefully cut them out. When I say carefully, I personally like to leave a little white edge around the outside of my globes or earth. So I should free all of these first before I start cutting. Like so. There we go. I'm going to just take one of these guys and show you what I mean. So I'm going to cut around the edge, but I'm going to leave a little white and that's just because I really like that kind of finish on this piece of work. You can cut it however you wish though. So I'm going all the way around nice and carefully. There we go. And there. Alright, first earth. And I actually made some earths on some other paper to see how they came out just to do a test. I quite like the way this brown paper worked. Um, but I'm just going to stick with my white ones for now. So what you want to do is make the choice of how you are going to stick down your um, string. Are you going to have an earth in between or are you going to have all the letters in a row and your earths at the end? On my example, let me grab it right here. On my example I made earlier, I had all my letters spaced out with a earth like this. I had them all spaced out. So for this time around, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep all my letters together and have my earths on the outside to make it different from my last one I made. You want to take a piece of string and I'm using this kind of like um, this kind of rough twine 
you can use whatever you have at home and I'm gonna be basically laying them out onto my string so let me see right here now I made six earths so that means we can space these out how we want you might want to do three next to your earth or three next to your day you might want to have one next to your day and two next to your earth at the top it's really up to you how you space this out I'm gonna put them on here like so and what you want to do is you want to lay them on top of your string to get an idea of where they're gonna go like so and you want to get some tape now this is a little bit tricky because you want to make sure that you put your letters on the right way um, so what you're gonna do is lay your string down we're going to flip our letters over so that the other way. I'm going to lay my string on top. And I'm going to put my tape um, at the same like line, our parallel, sorry, to the, oops, moving it, to the string. So I'm going to lay it on top of the string, press it down, get my next piece of tape. Make sure that's where I would like it to be. Press it down, moving it along. Another little piece of tape. So, press it down. And like I said, I'm going to have one of my earths on this side. So that's my earth next to my letters. And there we go. And I'm going to put another earth, I can just cut one more out, very quickly, so I'm going to cut one out, there we go, and I'm going to stick that guy on the other side of my string, move it across here so you guys can see. I'm going to stick him right there, and that means that my day, not my earth, I've got, still got to do my earth part yet, but my day section is finished. Let's flip this over. Oh, that looks so cool. Oh my gosh, I love it. All right, so now you want to do the same for your earth. Last bit of tape. All right, let's turn this guy over and see what it looks like. Earth. And last little bit. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's going to look so good. And there, guys, we have our very own Earth Day Bunting. See you soon.